right. Welcome to uh, the Federation X podcast, Running on Tangents. My name is Grayson, which I should have updated already and forgot because I was so busy talking to uh, Lars here. So let me get that updated on the screen. And uh, Lars is with me. We're going to do something a little different today. The podcast is obviously we're going off at an, a, a strange hour, not normally what we would do, but we couldn't find a better time to fit it in. And we didn't want to go too long without getting together again. Uh, you know, first card in the Federation X uh, rebirth, um, first card of 2021 in the new year. We're going to spend a little time updating on the card. We're going to talk about, you know, one of the big angles, the story under which we, we rebuilt and brought the Federation back. And then we've got a couple of, I think, interesting topics to dig into and to talk our way through. One of them being just our format in general. How do we play? We get a lot of questions about that these days, especially as we join other discords and, and the larger eFed community. There seems to be a, a difficulty understanding what we do. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about that. And then we're going to talk about whether or not anybody really plays a face anymore. Is that even a thing that exists? And uh, then we'll give you our top five. We've both had a chance to, to think about, you know, some top five big surprises that we've seen come out of the relaunch of Federation X. Uh, so it should be a pretty good show. And Tim, let's, let's start uh, right there at the top and, and take a look at the first card, Seasons Beatings. You booked it. You put it together. Uh, I did a bunch of the review and the judging and results on it. Let's talk about the card because pretty successful card for the first card <clears throat> in five years. Yeah, quite quite impressed. Um, just the sheer amount of activity and interest everybody showed. Um, I wasn't expecting, you know, half of half of what we got. Um, you know, don't, don't be scared or, or, or afraid to come check check it out because. Um, each individual match is in its own separate container, so you just follow what you what you specifically want to follow, whatever angle you want you wanted to follow, whatever characters you want to follow. But at the end of the end of a three day card and not having a card for what it's been five years yeah. since anything happened. Like, I mean, we had seventeen different different players post fifty times in three days. Yeah, that, that's Which pretty is amazing. Yeah, which is wildly active. Um, you know, it's and it, and the interesting thing is the, uh, the there. Are, first of all, I just want to take a second and say, hey, there's a couple of people showing up on the live stream that we don't know that have come checked out the Federation X page. Uh, I see the hatred on there. I see TKWA. So hey, super glad you jumped onto the live stream. Thanks for dropping by. Um, if you have questions, mm -hmm. don't hesitate to throw them up. We would love to interact and answer them as we're going. Um, I thought one of the things that was really interesting on the card, Tim, is um, you booked it pretty intuitively. If you look through the results of the card, one of the things you see is some of the earlier matches, the ones that were lower on the card, really didn't get a lot of turnout, didn't get a lot of play. There was a little bit of work, but not a ton. And then as you progress into the card, it really quickly jumps up to like everybody doing at least two posts, everybody doing at least three posts. Um, right. And so you're getting into these... 10 posts, 11 posts, 12 posts in the, in the main event, it, it was active and there was a lot of interaction. Lots of people jumped into a story that wasn't theirs. And I know for our, our friends who are from more traditional eFeds, that, that might be confusing. Like, what does that look like? We're going to talk about what that looks like <laughs> just after this. Um, but it's not uncommon in Federation X as you are on a card to be, you know, telling your piece of the story and have a a wrestler who's not involved at all um, cut a promo or inter interject themselves into the story and to see people have to roll with it and engage it. Um, and we saw uh, some pretty interesting um, interaction from people not involved directly or not booked in the match. Right, in, right. In this I part. mean, and not only not only get a chance to, to, to chip into the story, they get a chance to actually affect an outcome or two right. if, if they're lucky. So uh, that's always fun and it's realistic, right? Yeah, so. uh, and and the truth is we had two instances where the interference that they posted mm -hmm. and role-played and then used our sim to see if they were successful or not um, actually had an impact on the outcome of the match. And, right. and so that's, I think that's part of the fun because now there's all kinds of story that can build and come out of it 
or the guys who got screwed or yeah. who won I mean, because of somebody's interference. If you're not pissed and want to go after somebody for, for screwing up a win that right. they interfered or they messed up an interference on, uh, on, on your behalf or not. Yeah. Come on. I mean, that, that's a whole storyline you could, you could even create for yourself and why and how and all that. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. So let me start with this. Uh, we had an inactive rumble. We we're going to give away a blood sport championship match. Uh, top notch begins, throws up a really good post. We get one follow from Athelia Crow. Uh, we didn't get really much momentum after that. So I think we just called that one out as a draw. We'll probably find a chance to work each of them in. Um, kind of a standard, um, you know, moderate level yeah. of activity showing. Well, I think I think that's something we'll probably see on the next few cards just to try to intrigue people. Right. Um, anybody that's lurking, I mean, we see a lot of lurkers out there that maybe haven't jumped in yet you know give them a chance to get their get their foot wet into the waters of, of a rolling role play fed maybe they're not right. maybe they're not uh, uh, have that experience quite yet but they can they can kind of dip their toe into the and uh, see what it's all about that's cool but I, guarantee, that's I guarantee you if we, we had a new player a brand new player jump into one of those we would be all over trying to give them something to to do for sure I and I think that's like, that's an interesting question. It, let's make sure uh, we recognize that that new player jumping in probably from what we've seen so far, doesn't play in a place where showing up and posting once will result in seven things to read and follow. Um, right. that, that might be new for them. And, and if it is, we don't want to drown them and chase them away, but we want to show them like we're super interested in the new character, the new idea, the new person to interact with. And I, I think you'll see that. I think that you're right. If we had seen a name we didn't know before, there would have been a lot of people who kind of poked at that thread and were super interested in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we follow that. We see Benny Blair against Tori Anus in an X Factor ranking match where Tori kind of showed up and posted twice. So that was good. Yeah. Benny didn't show up at all. I assume one of those posts he meant to log in as Benny and just logged in as Tori. I mean, at this point, I can only assume they're the same person. I've seen no evidence to the contrary. Um, so I just kind of threw the match out because it didn't really yeah. turn into much of anything. Yeah. <clears throat> we, we did get to see her entrance uh, music, which was very, very special. <laughs> of course we did. Uh, and I think it spawned a whole conversation uh, uh, from some people that made its way out of the Discord to just talk about the entrance songs. Um, so we go after that. There was a tag team ra rankings match, uh, consumed by hugs, which is, you know, pretty entertaining team and uh, aggravated assault who are an old school <laughs> team. We're talking about Max Entropy and Eliza the prophet. Um, and they, uh, first of all, the, the writing back and forth was excellent. Everybody involved in it got at least one post in there was eight total while they were going at it. And uh, we get to that, that sim to, to say, hey, who's going to finish this and take it home? And Max is a beast on that sim. Like, early it looked like Eliezer was good. Max was a beast. Uh, he brought in 16 points for his team. Um, and they won, I think, 30 to 18, like, by 12 points, which is substantial. That's awesome. Uh, and so they're going to uh, wrap that up. It looks, it looks like a, a good move forward. For guys that I think seeing them together in the tag team ranks could take a run at at those first tag team titles. Oh no doubt, no doubt. Uh, it, it was good to see that uh, that team of Max and the Prophet come together and actually start to show some activity. Right when you thought you thought Kaz and uh, and off we're gonna we're gonna you know kind of come together yeah. with it and then and then um, it turned out to be a really competitive match and that's what I was hoping when I booked it and um, they didn't disappoint. I was really, you know, obviously a little bit more impressed personally with uh, with Max and the Prophet coming together and doing what they did. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a team that you've got to go back a pretty long way to the last time we got to see them together. They do have a history, but it's been years. Um, mm -hmm. But that chemistry really came back together pretty well, and so it was fun to see that. Yep, in uh, very short order. Don't want to ignore that there's some comments on the live stream. I know that Chris doesn't like to go at least a day without getting some attention from me. So I'm just going to give it to him so that he can sleep well tonight. Um, you, you, there you go, Chris. I, it's a wonderful troll. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. Well done. I'm super impressed by it. Um, 
let's talk about the six man tag match, which right. had tons of potential and yeah. died on the vine because unfortunately we lost a player <laughs> um, probably three, four days before the card actually came to fruition and, and kind of killed some of the momentum of the angle. Although I think we still got a pretty good match out of it, or at least some pretty good setup and some pretty good character yeah. building that came out of it. Yep. Yep. I mean, it, it kind of stunted the, 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 the move forward with the, with the match getting to the ring. Everybody was kind of just wondering what, you know, who was, who should do what in this kind of situation. But I think we kind of hashed it out and, and figured it out with some backroom, uh, some backroom attacks and eventually right. got something going with, with Cole styles and, and, uh, and uh, Maverick Dawson and then end up kind of all coming together with a, with a kind of a, a rally to one of our only faces on the roster. Thank, thank goodness. Wow, which we'll talk about because I got to tell you, I haven't been on the other side of that. Man, it is tough to yeah. rein in the urge to retaliate or to fire off language that's very heelish in response to some of the things that good heels yeah. are doing. And we were in matches with good heels, so it's it's tough to deal with that. And and maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe that's why we don't have more faces because you got to eat a lot of crow to be a decent face, and that's yeah. it's not easy to do. Um, hey, I see that uh, uh, Karen Crow. Uh, Brennan's jumped on. That's great. I'm glad you're around. I know that's an early start where you're at. So I'm amazed um, that you were able to get up and get yourself in the right state to be on this with us. Glad yeah, no doubt. You. And I see Robert there too. I'm glad you're out there as well. Um, let's let's take, before I leave this one, this was the first match where we saw an IMT. Uh, we saw uh, of Hugger interfere <laughs> in an effort. By the way, I just want everybody to know before he interfered on sim points, the team that was shorthanded was winning and then he interfered and then they weren't. And then of course, just so everybody's super clear, I counted every one of Jake Price's missed Sims as a loss and gave yeah. the points to the other team. And then it was a berry. It was a light, instead of being a one, one to one and worth doing some of the Sim judging, uh, you just, it's unfair, but <clears throat> there's, there's really only one way that you can't punish the team that whose all their members show up. That's not fair. Well, well, hopefully the ending was 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 there and set to prop up Cole Styles for a bigger yeah. story along yeah. the way. We'll see if we can't push that forward. I think I think we totally can. Um, so so props new breed to taking that win, and uh, and then we we get to this special segment where I was expecting soap opera man, and right. what I got was the stunt man Colt Calhoun, who. Yeah. I hold a special place in my heart for Colt Calhoun. He is the most boring podcast guest that we've ever had on. And I will never let him forget it until he comes <laughs> back on and is wide awake during the podcast. But it prompted some people to jump in and, and participate. I think we ended up with uh, three extra people jumping into that segment, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it took a bit to, to kind of get going, but uh, nobody really understood what exactly he was going to come with. He didn't understand quite frankly what he was going to come with yeah. so 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 uh, he opened it up to, to anybody to come out and and uh jump in and uh and proclaim clarity on anything or anyone they wanted to to uh to kind of lay out and, and and um and say and get off their chest and uh, uh one of the anus sisters came out uh, uh, apparently a real big fan of Colt and then Ove Hugger showed up again. Right, right. Yeah, that was good. I think we got a little uh, Vat and Mai in there as well Vat, who, yeah. who I'm equally entertained by, so I, I enjoyed all of that. Uh, we followed that. We started to get into the upper tier of the card and at this point we're looking at an X-Factor ranking match which ultimately landed somebody new in the number one contenders position. Uh, where we see a competition between Holland and the Kansas Kid and Karen Crow. And I got to tell you, uh, that's the first time I really got into the depth of a match and thought, man, some people just don't miss a beat. Like, they were all on pace. There was a lot of activity on the, uh, on the card in the match from them. Uh, we're talking about 11 posts, at least two from each of them. Uh, we get an appearance from Jackie Douglas, who's, uh, you know, inserting himself into the story there. Um, and then we get a win by the Kansas kid. 
Yeah. Yeah. So probably the second best or probably right up there with, with the best match in, in the card. Yeah. Um, and, and who would have thought that uh, the, uh, the, the society of serious uh, wrestlers would, would uh, uh, put on a match that, uh, that, that held that kind of weight for us in the Kansas kid actually was serious wrestling moves and um, Dean Malenko man of a thousand holds has, has taught him a few things apparently. Well, I'll tell you, um, <laughs> now he'll never get away with it. Now we know he's capable of it. Uh, we're going to demand serious kid, at least on occasion. I, uh, I was really entertained. Um, Look at the rankings after that match. It's pretty amazing to see. Kids I, right up there. Last time, right? Yep. Yeah, that's, it is very cool to see him jump to number one. I think that's a big deal. And, and if anyone's curious... Uh, I, it was prior to really implementing the regular structure of how our rankings work. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. And so mm -hmm. what I looked at was um, the, the consequence of the match, the volume of the effort, and then wins and losses, who's performing, who's, who's, who's not. And, and Kid won a, a match that was serious, like, and I don't mean in writing style, I mean in consequence, right? It was X-Factor ranking match with people up near the top of the rankings. Um, he... He was involved in a high-level activity match, and he was there on both sim and role play. And as a result, seems the right person uh, to now, if he chooses, knock on Carnage's door. Well, for a guy who's not used to riding match action, he's right. pretty damn good at it. So, yeah, and and I see um, Crow commenting on it. And I just want to say this, I. Everybody who was on it, like it took some willpower on my part not to put all of them in the top five. Uh, like immediately, like even though they lost the match, like the performance was just so strong. But I will tell you, as I went down the card and thought about where the rest of them slotted in, I gave or down the rankings, I gave credit to the fact that it's such a quality match. If yeah. it was two or three people, they were at the top of that two or three people in that area because um, all of them did really good work on that. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. The Bloodsport Championship match. We get our, our second INT. It actually changes the outcome of the match. And uh, and it puts the belt back around the waist of Devin Deshaun, who is in the midst of the Danucci Cup. So right. uh, talk to me a little bit about that match, Tim. So great timing. Um, uh, Vadame snagged the... Uh, the blood sport championship right as the booking was going to be locked it was right. going to be it was just going to be the the two uh terry anus and and uh devin um to try to try to see if devin could could take that uh title back right in time for his first round of the danucci cup and in, in uh, how wrestling and um it just fit, it fit the storyline so well to fit those three back in there. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was, it was such a good ad. And I think for Devin having Vadame in the mix with that dynamic of role play, I think it helped him. Oh yeah, I, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> it it could have been <laughs> tough otherwise, for sure. No, that's good. And so, you know, max entropy using the interference rule strategically mm -hmm. uh chose to interfere on behalf of um Vatmai, okay. lost and as a result gave the points to uh devin and max will tell you hey i i know the system the one thing that wasn't going to happen <laughs> is that terry anus wasn't going to leave with the title which is an interesting approach in a three-man match one of you two will get my points and and get bumped ahead right not not this person. And, and so does that lead to some heat or something that can really uh, build from there? Sure, sure. And if I was any of that, like I said, any of those other two competitors, I'd be going after Max today. Right. For sure. Right. Absolutely agree. Now we come to the crux of the card. Um, it was, first of all, it was a, a really interesting how it came together that this match was going to happen. Uh, I think it came together after you and I originally talked about the card. Like, I think it blew yeah. up on the boards and you added it in because it wasn't part of the original plan. But it mm -hmm. came together well. I think there was a lot of hype around it. And the results were great. I'm talking, of course, about the X Factor World Heavyweight Championship match uh, between terrific Tony Robes, who at the time was a number one contender, and Carnage, who I don't remember where he was in the rankings, but who grabbed the story 
with Tony Robes. And uh, it was a great story. They both wrote well. I thought Robes advanced some plot intricacies a little better, which is why I gave the finishing rights to him. Right. Uh, but I thought Carnage did a good job too. Uh, we saw an Omega appearance, you know, uh, historically Carnage and Omega run in the same circles. Omega makes his return, shows up for the match. We saw Maverick Dawson INT that backfired, which which is part of the INT process, right? Part of that great storytelling right. as they try and get involved. It doesn't work out to their advantage. And, and we see this result come together where Carnage gets crowned the uh, X Factor world champion, uh, the first one of this new era in Federation X. What did you see in the match that you really liked, Tim? Well, I, I like the, the slow build um, that, that Tony Robes gave um, to, to build up to a being a really big deal um, for him and his career. Right. And I like the fact that, um, you know, Carnage played at, at a point of not so, not so really at his top game and, and playing towards that in, in role play and knowing that he had to pull out all the stops in order to make this happen. Um, you kind of played to the real realistic view of, you know, he's been in an office job for the last, last five years and, and, uh, you know, trying to, trying to get through and break through all that to, to, uh, take it to the young kid. Um, so I, I really, really enjoyed these two going at it for the, you know, for the week prior running up to it. And they pretty much just demanded that this match happen. Um, and, and that's great for a booker. Usually, you know, you don't have to think about it. It's, it's already made, you know, for ourselves. So, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the match. It got, it got a lot off the rails there at the end where it's like what kind of other crazy things that we can throw in there that, that would make any kind of impact on it. And it, it, uh, kind of kind of got a little little away from from them i think yeah i saw something on this score that i just want to uh, throw some props sure. to chris on. i saw chris talking about the fact that um losing opens a whole new avenue for how he can push tony forward uh that's the spirit that we're going to talk about next week when we have the lars versus genocide podcast um which is <laughs> You know, losing doesn't matter. <laughs> like, this is fake online internet wrestling. Losing can be right. as, as important a part of the story and the advancement of your character as uh, winning can be. And I really like that he was quick to point out, this is only going to fuel this whole heelish run that I'm going to be on with this character. I think that's the right response to it, the right approach to it. Um, and I was pleased to see it. I also think it really furthers kind of the underlying, like, Hey, so they end up getting a title match and the old guard, and I mean, we, the, the old guard, put him yeah. down. And, and yeah. so there's something to that from a story standpoint on that macro level of what's going on. Right. 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 So I, I fully expected this morning when I popped open the, the role play to, that uh, Tony Robes would be throwing a massive fit demanding a rematch like next, the next day. And um, he's pretty much done that trying to play the legal card uh, to it. Um, the, the one thing that was kind of strange for me in this one is Jackie Douglas inserting himself into this uh, this one to, to kind of uh, screw over Tony Robes and uh, trying to figure out how the power base feels about that and, and role play uh, as, as far as how we handle that situation. A promoter uh, from from outside the company coming in with his his uh, his guys that are virtually unknown now all of a sudden is in our in our main event deciding who the world champion is. Interesting. Yeah. I think there's a lot of implications um, for how we play things with the power base, kind of moving through this. That that idea that you're playing off the actual leadership, the actual bookers um, in character, really leaves us in in some questionable situations, right? Like we, we really do have to, you know, may, may, maybe we don't love that. Maybe we do love some of it because it drives ratings. Like, you know, we, yeah. it's, it's really going to create some interesting dynamic. And of course we all know, uh, Jackie Douglas, uh, his handler is the king of douche. So, uh, there's no doubt that he will find a way to deal with whatever we throw at him. And so we'll, 
we'll see how this plays out. That's for sure. Hey, one of the things that came out of the card, not on the card, but alongside and filtered in was Marlo taking the initial storyline of how the, the organization <laughs> got relaunched and um, weaving in uh, some closure at least to that so that it's not this big thread that's just kind of getting forgotten as matches start to happen. Right. Um, you know, there's there's some highlights. I don't know that all the highlights are popular with everybody who got zinged by them, but Marlo took it on himself to do what the rest of us weren't doing, which is, hey, you brought the character in to specifically solve this issue, figure out what yeah. happened to the finances. I've stayed true to that. Here, let me write that story out. And so... Yeah. Um, I should I should have booked that as, as as a whole entire role play segment on the match and gave it its own container. That's on me. I totally I totally forgot to do that or, or totally didn't understand what Randy's timing was right. uh, to to be able to do that. So, uh, but he did it and did it very well as he always does. Yeah, and uh, it, it it told that a pretty good uh, storyline that I think we're, we have stuff to stuff to go by. With it. All right. Do you have a favorite part of, of what he did or what he laid out? Something you really liked? I mean, the, the the whole tying it back to one of one of the good guys, you know, being involved with it. The 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 um, the addition of the the parrot, the Tony, the parrot is uh, is always a, a a fun thing to to see how how it rolled back through. Currently, and, the and, number one most popular Tony in Federation X, by the way. <laughs> Due to online polling, I don't know what to tell you. It's apparently it's not close. So, uh, yeah, Tony the Parrot was super entertaining. Um, you know, uh, Gino whipped that one up brilliant. And Marlo did what, does what he always does, which is he grabs onto something that fits and sells it, yeah. takes it from being amazing to uh, just so sold and, and off the charts that he really kind of embeds it. Uh, I know there's... There's uh, more than a few of the lines that he zinged in there with the parrot became the comic relief, um, but it was entertaining. Yeah. Um, I just wonder how you, broke, broken uh, genocide is going to be here after, uh, after realizing his marriage for the last five years has basically been a sham. Right. Yeah. That of, of all of it, I will confess, I struggle with that. Like, that he yeah. didn't know that it wasn't Haley was the <laughs> toughest part to absorb. But I think yeah. that was uh, that was Marlo taking a shot at how to weave the story together properly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it required some creativity. So there's that. Um, that it's Stan Daniel's wife who actually stole the money. Uh, she had always been played as a snake. Good mm -hmm. on Marlo to remember that she was always kind of that way and manipulative of Stan. And maybe the reason why Stan disappeared and hasn't come back um, I think that was an interesting piece. And of course, you can't look past the piece that he layered in, which is, uh, you know, Marlo's, like Longshot, suffered a lot of head trauma over the years. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, one of the things he threaded in to create some tension dynamics in there was that uh, the Mad Bomber had been working on technology that helps with the healing of brain injuries and hadn't made it available to him. And then he revealed that maybe Lars knew about it and so it created some tension with Lars as well. Um, yeah. I know that originally the plan was he was actually writing Marlo out of the story and we would see somebody new because he feels like Marlo's been battered <laughs> and broken or really doesn't fit. But also there may be some stuff that came out of this story and the dynamics and the responses that have come from the story that may force Marlo to at least continue to work that character a little bit longer. Um, how did you feel about that piece, which really kind of, threw some shade a little bit at Lars as part of the uh, the setting up of the the wrap up story. No, I I'd say that's completely well earned over the years and I, and I think I tried I tried to play it as Lars reflecting and and, and realizing that and and owning that and um, you know basically whatever happened moving forward was you know well earned and uh, he deserved any shade that he could he could possibly get at him at that point. I, uh, the, the other aspect of all this is, is you know, it kind of puts us in a situation to play it like we're going to have to scratch and claw and fight to even, to even you know, make this a thing, right? So we, yeah. we got to do things um, uh, from the ground level up and uh, not be so extravagant in, in what we're, where we're choosing to, to book and who we're choosing to book and how yeah. we're choosing to spend the money, right? I thought one of the lines, and I don't think it was a throwaway, but I think for a lot of people, you kind of buzz through it, 
is the part where Marla just says pointedly, you can't afford all the contracts you've offered. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so what oh, do you, how do you role play out of that? What are we going to do? <laughs> right. Do we got to, and like, everybody's taking a pay cut. Everybody's, so, uh, you know, whatever. So, yeah. I, I think, like, I think when you, when you think about that though, right? Like if you think about breaking kayfabe, the mm -hmm. boys in the back are about looking after each other. If everybody takes a 10% haircut, nobody loses their job. Everybody keeps everybody safe but we don't break it when we play our characters. You know, right. we've got guys who hurt other people and, and nobody seems to mind. Um, so are you telling me Tony Robes is willing to get paid less so that jabroni number one can still have a job? Uh, he's already role-played himself and out today. I don't know if you've, you've I seen, seen that. But no. he, he's, he's already precluded the, the new breed from taking a pay cut. Plus he's added a 10% uh, bonus. So, so he role-played that? <laughs> We'll see what Grace says about that. <laughs> um, and and I think that that's going to be, that's going to be, <laughs> if you're not catching the live feed, first of all, uh, the real world champ showed up. And in the end, Tony Robes called for a recount and says, we missed the sim boats from Georgia. Uh, and and uh, then Jason Miller showed up and said, storm the power base. So things are going wonderfully on the live stream. Uh, I, I think there's... I think there's a real opportunity here for there to be a groundswell of like whispering in the locker room. Like, <clears> hey, I, I hear everybody's contracts not as guaranteed as it's supposed to be. And, right. and that in itself could be an interesting dynamic to be working on between now and the next card. Yep. Yep. They got a choice to make, um, whether they're going to stick with a, a rebuilding company or go somewhere where they know they have a guarantee. Right. You know, right. And, uh, you know, it's a choice is, between, you know, playing in smaller, smaller uh, arenas or going and, and taking those couple um, community center shows that you have, we'll have to get through to, in order to get to a larger, a larger scale. Yeah, I, I just want Chris to know, like I, as Grayson, would like <laughs> to give Tony Robes some money, but I'm going to need to take it from him and pay somebody who's capable of carrying the title. So probably I'll give his money to Carnage. Because we don't pay a lot for guys who get one singles match and choke in it. That's just not what we do. All right. Um, hey, I think all of that was great work by Marlo. I think it gave oh, totally. everybody a chance to get involved and plug into a different point of it. Let's, uh, let's leave that behind and let's just take a minute. One of the things that's come up over the last week is we've seen a lot of people talk about... Um, the format we play. And we've seen it talked about from a number of different levels. People trying to understand it. Uh, Mikey putting things together, trying to figure out how to classify us and, and us trying to explain it, but also going, holy crap, like we don't clearly fit in one of your classifications. I think he settled on hybrid, but I'm not sure that that's an adequate description of what we do. And so sure, I think our players understand it really well, but we do have some other people that show up or watch the live streams. Uh, who really don't understand it. I thought you and I might take 10 minutes and just talk about, um, not just in concept, but actual practice. What does it look like when we put a card together between cards, on cards? Right. What does that look like for us? Well, in, in this conversation came up on the EFED podcast Discord um, yep. a couple of nights ago as well. And That's right. it, it was interesting trying to explain to players that have, that have only um, played either angle fed or role play fed based on cards. What happens in the in between? Um, what what actually a rolling role play looks like? Right. What are you talking about? Are you are you are you building? You know, or is it stupid where you are like the the real house? So why is a FedEx, uh, you know, again, are you, are you, uh, you know, making you, cookies? You have to be careful or, with those comments. You know, I made one and we lost the player. So, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, it, it's one of those things where you, you got to understand first and foremost, we're, we're what I call it a rolling role play fed. And um, it's not all about match action or, or card buildup. It's about a lot of, a lot about character development. It's, yeah. it's a lot about, creating your own heat in other ways outside of the ring and uh, to kind of build up to making the booker's job a lot easier whenever whenever you go to put those those two against each other so let's let's do this let's let's start by talking about our card structure and then we'll slip <laughs> sure. into the in between and i'll give you some comparatives but I'll also draw some out from you so um when we talk about cards I, 
what we've seen when we've looked around the eFed landscape so far, and, and admittedly we're new to exploring the eFed landscape, but what we've seen is often one or two posts, often promos, uh, often word capped, not always, but often word capped. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, the judge comes in and looks at your two and my two, and then the judge writes the match as a means of telling us who won, right? right. Right. And, um, in, and, in, and in some cases, they allow you an avenue off card to throw in little character development pieces right. here or there, but it's not prominent that that happens. Okay. I know some of the feds I've looked at have had longer than 750 words. Some of them have a 2,000 or 2,500, and there's a lot more space for character development to be fit into one or two promos in that space. Right. right. Um, so I, I would say this. I don't think that's, I think. I think a lot of people will go, yeah, that's so different. It's not wildly different. Like if you think yeah. about what we do, whether we say do two or do three or do as many as you want, but do at least two, whatever we say, mm -hmm. you write your 750 words. I write mine and I pay attention to what you write in yours. And I might want to take elements of it or build on it or follow up on it. Then you write and then I write. And then instead of turning it over to a judge, you write some of the match action. I write some of the match action. Then maybe you write some more. Then maybe I write some more. And the judge still has to come in, still has to look at both of them, and still has to decide who won. But the judge doesn't have to write how the match finishes because whoever right. wins finishes it out, right? right? And that is not terribly far away from what we've seen from EFED players so far, um, except that it's a lot more writing, I think, than we're seeing from a lot of the EFED players that we've poked around with. And that certainly mm -hmm. isn't comprehensive across the uh, the internet but but it, it is what we've seen so far um where i think and and that would be you know a king of wrestling tournament that we would do that would be any superstar match we would do right our superstar is our strictly role play mm -hmm. avenue and we have that component to our game which i think is probably closest to being familiar to the efed players we've spoken to would you would you think that's accurate yeah, I, I totally think it's accurate, and and I think, um, as we as we go down and maybe add a couple more cards to our to our reboot, I, I think we do bring back the superstar um, belt to give that avenue to those players that that don't want to to have the element of a sim right. kind of situation involved. Yeah, and, well, and and I think if we had two players come to us and say we don't want the sim, we are working a feud, and we want the feud to be right. decided by skill, not sim. We would say, cool, let's do that in the match. Mm -hmm. um, what I think really sets people off to think, and I, I know we've seen some comments from people who are like, you're just a sim fed, uh, which means you're not big on role play, which is couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, we're so big on role play that we're not married to making a judge read twenty things and and do all this work we're willing to role play the loss or the win. And so where the match isn't significant, we'll let the sim decide it entirely. Where the match is, you know, 50-50, we'll include the sim with role play and a judge will still decide points from this and points from this, what's the total point value. And then when we get into really big moments and really big events, we tend to go role play. And I think of things like the King of Wrestling or the Superstar sure. Championship, they tend to work out that way. Um, and, and, and to, to um, kind of make, mention any kind of championship match is going to have um, that element of role play taking a, a lot of those points right. into consideration. I, and I, I'll say this, Tim and I haven't talked this through. Lars and I haven't talked this through yet to really nail it down. The one place that, that that's not true, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is the blood sport title. Because right. it's a 24-7 sim belt. Uh, yeah. Why would I put extra burden on Tim to read and, <laughs> and judge the post when five minutes later you can just write a 350 word post and take the belt anyways? Like, right. I, I don't think it makes. Now, if you said to us, it might be a blood sport title match, but we've been feuding for a month and we really want a culmination, different <laughs> concept. We would we would want to honor that and and be aware of it. But I'm sure. one of the things I'm trying to be really protective of is the demands that get put on judges. Uh, we've burned judges out uh, the way some of you guys burn blunts. So um, it's, it's not something we want to be involved in doing to judge. We want people who are willing to judge, who are willing to give their energy and don't feel like it's a time suck in a black hole. Um, 
But I think it's important that people know we play this role play in the matches. We don't, we ask for a minimum. Often we ask for a minimum of two posts in a card. Um, we don't ask, we don't set a maximum. You can post as many times as you want until the end of the card. So if you want to go back and forth 17 times. Yeah, it depends on the, the length of the card. This one was three days. So we said post at least three times, 350 right. words or, or more. Right. You know, and, and that's, that's all you have to do to, to get the win. You can do more, uh, you know, but you, but you should hit that men. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so that's what we're doing on card. We are letting Sim be involved sometimes. We are uh, having Sim be 50-50 sometimes, and sometimes we don't use it at all. And I think it's important for us to clarify that for people. Um, then, then we get to the between cards. To me, the between cards are everything you see on television that's not in the ring. Right. It's yeah. all the same skits and sessions and bits and like it's the setup, it's the backroom politics, it's the uh it's the swerve, it's the it's all that stuff. Yeah. How are you gonna get an opponent that you really wanna really wanna have a match on to pay attention to you to really want that match with you? You you, you get in front of them and you start to tell a story with them or force them into a storyline that they cannot ignore. Right. Um you know, to, to have you in. So, I mean, to get you something to build on. That's right. And, and, and I think that for me, um, as much as I love the card, I actually like the match action. I like being involved. I know you like match action. Um, yeah. We know not all of our players do, uh, but the between card times makes the card matter. It's hard to care about a card that doesn't have any buildup. It's hard to right. care about a match that doesn't have any tension. Do, would I really care to be in a match with Tony Robes if I wasn't reading the crap he was doing between cards? Probably not. Yeah. Right? I'd have to see him on yeah. a few cards to realize the match on the cards was good enough that I would care to try and get him to book a match with me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, you can't really flesh out a character's um, – what you know a character is and what their reactions are going to be to sp certain specific things, unless you have that in between character build. Right. And, and again, for me, I'd rather have that character build outside of match promos and match action. I mean, right. you can have that in there obviously, uh, but it, you, you have a little bit more focus on that, on that nuance. Right. In the, in um, I think, so I think that's, that's a pretty clear illustration I will say we do believe in that rolling of the role play approach, which means when um, Carnage finishes a post, it's usually wide open for somebody else to kind of go, oh, I have an idea. And they can just jump in and continue it. And in that scenario, Carnage might get waffled in the head with a steel chair, or he might end up having uh, beers at the in the dressing room with the guys. Like it's really up to that person on how they're gonna move it forward. And Carnage shows up and sells whatever he finds when he comes back to the story, which I think is part of what makes it so interesting between cards. Yep. I think, I think in that Discord, that EFED, um, EFED podcast Discord, it was mentioned, um, somebody mentioned that, you know, you're almost like a, uh, a creative writing group based yeah. on wrestling. And I that's saw pretty that. Good. That's right. It's, it's a pretty good description. Yeah, I Instead think you're right. saying rolling role play, kind of a creative, creative writing. Yeah. yeah. Um, two other things about the way that we play before we jump to our main topic. Number one, we have the Blood Sport Championship. We've had it for, I can't even tell you how long. 24-7, uh, there's a title belt always on the line. Um, anybody can challenge for it. It kind of gets passed around, much like the 24-7 titles that we have seen uh, in the last 20 years. And it's been around that long. It's been around longer than that. Um, and so there's always an opportunity to just jump in, come in out of nowhere, yeah. day one, win a title, and the whole Fed has to pay attention to you. I like that element of it. I built an entire character's mystique on the fact that we had a 24-7 title. Um, there's so much creatively you can do with it. Um, I, think that's, I think that's one of the things I really like. I think the other is... You know, I think in a lot of places historically that we've played, we've seen these um, kind of arbitrary decisions about who's going to be the next number one contender. We have a ranking system that gives you control over whether you want to pursue getting to number one contender status, puts you in a position to challenge the person above you and move above them and move up the, or 
ignored and just be stuck in the stories and, and do whatever matches come up on the card. Right. I mean, it, it can be part of the, it can be part of that in between that we were talking right. about. It, it can be added in there. That's right. So, so I, I do like those. I think those really put that opportunity. If you are title driven or, you know, you're building the, um, the CV of your character and you, you want to be able to look back in five years and talk about being the greatest young performer ever, we equipped you to be able to do part of that. Um, if you just want to get in the creative writing club and and do something unique and unusual, we've seen it all. We've seen uh, Spartan Warriors. We've seen the Undead. We've seen we've had a host of Twitter lesbians. We had Twitter lesbians before there were Twitter lesbians. Uh, we've seen it all. Um, not everybody leaves happy, but we have been forced. Uh, if you haven't seen a Boner Force post. You have not yet understood how far away from wrestling fake online wrestling characters can land, right? <laughs> There's no doubt. Yeah. So we we, we have a we have a uh, a, a Wookie character uh, in in Harry. Um, so it's just I mean it's a, it's a completely suspension of belief, but it, it is still revolved around wrestling somewhat somehow some yeah. way it goes back. Right. There's, there's creativity for sure. There are elements that shout back to the, the WWE of the 80s when people had outlandish, sure. ridiculous gimmicks, right? Sure. And and they have a tendency to get sold um, as though they're not gimmicks, but they're actually... I, uh, Jeff, I got one one thing that, that came up and I saw some criticism on, um, you know, kind of a layman uh, person and not... not fully seeing what we do on a regular basis kind of here's here's that out of the box and and uh seeing seeing um how we describe ourselves and I, I think a comment came up where um well then their promos must be really really bad if they're not just doing promos all the time and i think that's the farthest thing from the case yeah. i think our pro you know we can cut anybody in, in our in our group can cut a promo um without a drop of a hat. And, and I, I would agree with good. that. And I, I would say this, if you think writing scathing promos and blasting promos is the difficult part of the game, uh, you and I are in stark disagreement. Um, right. That part of the game is probably the easiest part of the game to learn. Learning how to sell somebody else and, and grow your character without throwing them under the bus is much more difficult. Throwing people under the bus is... Um, it's an easy way to to set some heat up, and it and it works, but it can only work so much if you don't. They're stress. not gonna, you know. In, in the other the other thing that's interesting is is when we talk about this whole creative writing, rolling role play aspect, is that um, it also creates some trust into what they're going to do with your character and what you're going to do with their character, and vice versa. And right. I know I've had many many um, situations over the years where I never would have taken taken my my uh, character into a, a certain way or a certain role and I totally went with it because it was interesting and I found it I found it dynamic and I and I rolled with it and took it and ran with it so right. I, mean, I think we see that a lot too yeah um I think a couple of things that have come up on the live stream before we move forward so one um you know uh, Miller correctly points out that we had Twitter lesbians when they were called ICQ lesbians. Um, number two, uh, Chris, Tony Rose says, hey, a lot of promos are cookie cutter. Um, they're formulaic. Uh, sure. They're uninspired. Um, there's nothing special about you beating your chest and talking trash about somebody. That's Maybe your trash is creative, but honestly, at, at some point, we've heard it all. Sure. And I think one of the other things that I really like is, is Miller commenting, it's really hard to build to a, a big feud cultivating match if all you do is bury your opponent, right? If your mindset is always bury, 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 and, and there's nothing else to your exchanges, it's, it's just a hostile argument. It's, right. there's, it's, not, it's not the story that culminates in something. And I, I, I don't think any of us would necessarily uh, tune in for those matches, whether it's uh, AEW or WWE. Barry, 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 Barry. No back and forth. No selling of the other guy's gimmick. No advancing of a storyline. And they go, "That's our pay per view. Would you fork out forty bucks for that?" No, it's not. It's not very not interesting, right? No. 
So I, I think that's an interesting point. And, and I think there's lots of conversation that can be had around this. We're certainly going to have more um, next Saturday night when we do our live stream at our regular time in the evenings, more people are around and available. We're going to have a chance to talk with uh, Genocide, Jason Miller and uh, Lars will be back and they will uh, have a little bit of a head to head. We're going to see if we can solve the uh, Gino dated Lars's daughter issue um, and some other discrepancies, but we're also going to talk about why uh, maybe feuders who really like cut the promo, cut the promo as their only go to struggle with the other side of it and why they're uncomfortable with the idea of, hey, this isn't a big match. Let's just let the sim decide so we can finish it and move on. Why that might be uncomfortable for some people. So we'll, we'll dig into all of that when we get uh, to next week's uh, podcast. But for now, let me ask you, Tim. Does anyone really play faces anymore? Not many. Um, I think, I think Av has played into that with the hugger role. Um, right. I, I think he's he can truly call him a face, especially after him gallivanting throughout our whole card this past week. And then Cole Styles is the only other true face that I see on the on the roster. Um, it's so easy to go into that tweener mode because everybody wants to be still be that that cool. Uh, cool heel that's not really a heel, but yet can can do bad things and and be, take the easy way out of, of, of things and say what they want, just like it, you were. Oh, that's saying. the problem, right? It's it's difficult to be the face when people are cutting promos on how stupid your name is or how <laughs> ugly you look or how you lost your last two matches and you're trash. Like it's hard to not because all of us have those bugs. Like it would be super easy for tomorrow's post with Cole to be about, here's how your name's stupid, and here's how your name, but that one, that's not his character. And and two, it's, he's not a face when that's the path he chooses to take. And right. our heels um, just going higher and higher over the top because they're not really against faces anymore. So they have to be badder right. than the other heel because that's who they're dealing with. And we just have this escalation. Right. Absolutely. And I think you feel like you have to be, you, you have to, if you really want it, you want to be that role and you don't have anybody playing that other side, then it's just a one up, one up situation of which one, which one can, can, can do the worst things to each other. Um, it's, and it's hard because a face, you know, I, I've, I've played faces throughout the years and stuff like that. It's just, it's just difficult to, to do and to do right. It's hard. It, it genuinely is, is difficult to pull off. I do think that a lot of the people who would claim their faces are really playing tweeners, which mm -hmm. is a, a really stylish way of saying nice heels. Yeah. Right? Like, there's a lot of them out there. They're like, well, I'm, I'm on the fence. Like, well, your character is an asshole. Just because the crowd's cheering for him doesn't make him a face. Right. Everybody wants to be the asshole whenever, it, whenever it's convenient for them. Yeah. Um, so I would just say, I mean, w w this has been a problem forever, right? This has been a problem for a long time. Ever, ever since Austin and The Rock and and all that, you have yeah. really cool heels. Everybody wants to be that that kind of kind of mold. Um, and so it's not a new problem. We we had it during CyberSlam. We had it during during Wrestle. We've had it during FedEx over the years. So um, it, it's very very golden when you have like a, a really true heel a really true face that plays it that way right they almost if you play it right you almost turn into heel kind of heat whenever you play a face correctly right it's true people hate you yeah it's so <laughs> infuriating um i remember one of my biggest complaints about playing a face is like hey, I, I have a job and I have all these other things. I can't just be on the boards all the time. And so then people will be like, I can't hack it. So I want to swerve you. And in character, the reason I'm swerving you is at two o'clock in the afternoon, I posted this thing and you weren't around to run in and save me. Therefore, you're the bad guy. I'm like, no, that's you selling my character really poorly. Now, if you want to do that, have me try and run in and tell the story of how it didn't work or somebody stopped me and I couldn't get to you. But this thing where you just sound like I didn't care because I wasn't sitting online waiting to write at two in the afternoon, yeah. that's pretty bad, right? And it, and it really is just a need to have an angle 
so that you can have that heat moment as you swerve or turn or want to go down the the bad uh, the bad character the bad uh, bad guy kind of mindset. I mean, and the other thing too is is with there being so little faces in the game and having been so little faces in the game is that gets they everybody eats that up, man. I mean, you don't have enough time as a face to address right. all the all the the heat that you're going to get picked at you on. So it's it's tough, and we need more for sure. Yeah, I, I think we do. I think it's tough to convince people to do it, especially the better your heels are at running yeah. them down the harder it is to put your hand up and go, I'll volunteer for that. Because the truth is, if you think back, Attitude Era is a great timeline to point to. Uh, prior to the yeah. Attitude Era, I think there were more faces. And, yeah. and I think if you point back even to the big run uh, uh, that Hogan had, the story was often about the heel um, attacking him, beating him down, uh, talking trash about him, uh, defaming his character. And then... And they got all the one-ups all along the way, but the payoff right. was always that the face won yep. and the crowd yep. popped, right? Absolutely. Very different, right? Very different. Um, is there a face that you really think back on and go, I either really enjoyed playing against it or this is one that I played and I really liked or like, is there one that you would point to even in um, in the last... 15 years, maybe even since Rassel, or or as Rassel was in its later stages? Was there somebody who was really knocking it out for you? I mean, I mean, for, for me, that, that and again, there's not very many that did it and did it right and did it well. Yeah. Um, you had all these kind of wishy-washy faces that, you know, they have a moral compass until it's convenient. Um, I And, and price is going to kill me and 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 you know you got i go back to nighthawk and gilgamesh being being that kind of staple for fedex at least um and then you the negative know, back on the yeah. live stream there should be just a host of it now from sure sure <laughs> i mean who else who else did it right and did it well i, I don't i can't think of any I think uh, i, I want to shout out to brendan because i appreciate him begrudgingly calling out positive joe power I put a lot yeah, of Joe. effort into Joe not being yeah. uh, uh, wishy-washy, but actually being positive all the time. And it yeah. took a lot of willpower to not just turn that into a douche and, gimmick. In, in you know, back in back in Cyber Slam, I mean, the the heels that jump out to you think you, you're you're more of in the line of thinking they're they're heels them or the faces that jump out to you. Yeah, you know, you're thinking more of a line of them being heels like Chevalier. Um, he, he played himself as a, as a face, but he came off so hated that he was heel like in nature, right. um, always trying to do the correct things and right things and proper things. He'd be out there cutting promos that were three posts long and he couldn't, didn't fit into one post and taking up all board space. Everybody hated him for it. So true. So true. I, uh, I think there were probably a couple, I will say this. Mountain tried really hard to be a face. Yeah, that's true. And I don't think it was intentional when he did the things that we accused him of it not being face for you to do that, like, and called him a bad yeah. guy. Like, I genuinely think he wrote a decent face. I just think he wasn't prepared for how destructive the heel work of the good guys was going to be. Oh, um, sure. But he, he was clearly a face, and I appreciated that he played himself as the good guy. There were other deficiencies in the way that he wrote, but it wasn't an unwillingness to be the face. So let me ask you a question. Did, did the new breed break Jackie Douglas from being a face? Did, did we totally turn him tweener? So I, my initial thought is that uh, early on, Jackie looked like a clear face. Yep. It is much less clear that Jackie is a face anymore. Uh, I don't think so. Right. No, nope. and and that's I mean, as long as Miller is still writing Jackie, um, there's a chance that this could play out well. The pull to respond yeah. in douche is strong, right? <laughs> and and so every we, every we time I talk hard. to him, I'm like, hey, we just so you know, <laughs> I still like the new characters. Um, 
And I don't think it's the right time to just go team SBFF tomorrow. Like that doesn't help where we're at. If we show up and pile on Tony Robes in yeah. full SBF that fashion, it kills his character arc. It doesn't yeah. build it, it kills it. And does what? And so I, Miller and I have, have talked about it. We've, we've pushed back and forth on it to make sure. Because you can tell, like he was like, I'm going to play person peoples. And he doesn't have the same energy for person that he would if we were just running Gino and Alan, right? Sure, but there's no doubt. It's tougher, guys. It is harder to play the guys that are on the bottom outcome of what's going on in the story. It totally is. And so I'm committed with Cole. Hey, to if not somebody, flip that. yes, if somebody wants to play a face, they have a really good face to, to bank themselves on with Cole Styles. Go in there and jump on that train and be that be that face group. It. Uh, but I like I had to think and look like what's a personality that won't just give in to people being jerks to you. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna play a bro and it's gonna be all karma and like yeah. and in that kind of spacey, not sure I really get it kind of way, but you know, and, and yet still be confident in the ring and capable and able to get angry and want to protect his friends, but but still be a face. And and that's not yeah. easy to do, right? That's definitely not easy to do. Um all right. So we have talked through this. I think we probably will get some more input. I know there's a bunch of guys. Um, I know Chris really wants to say Team SBFF won't in this arc. We would bury you so hard. You can't out-douche us. You can't out-heal us. We it would be the end of you. You'd be back in the boner force five minutes later. And then poor Maverick Dawson would have no angle to run. He'd have to turn face way too early in his career. It would kill him. Your dreams of being a world champion would be over. Stop pretending. I was your number one draft pick with Alan Scott for a reason, and you know it. So that's enough of that. All right. I got to tell you, I love that he's on the live stream just chirping away. I'm so entertained by it. I love it so much. Uh, and, 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 it, and honestly, if you understood how douchey those characters are, you would understand... Uh, like the, the parrot is the tip of the iceberg. Gino and I have these private chats where we're just laughing going, if we were doing this right now, and there's just a list. The parrot was the tip and it was brilliant. It's probably good that we move along. Um, let's talk as we wrap up about the top five surprises that we've seen um, since the Federation X relaunch. And Tim, why don't you go first? Sure. Uh, some of mine are about more of, of helping run the game and coming into this community that we find ourselves in 10 years later since we last really seriously wanted to, to, to jump into this. It's kind of weird, right? Um, I mean, the first thing that jumps out to me is, is just how strange um, Twitter has become this kind of hotbed for e-fetting. Yep. Um, Facebook and Twitter actually have e-feds ran that's basically their their message board or their their role play board is twitter and they just do like google docs in matches right. and and their, their role playing is 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 a twitter account that they have and they just basically you know cut promos and stuff with their 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 like 130 130 uh, character tweets all day wow. it's kind of strange that's, so that's, that's johnny access's <laughs> world <laughs> <laughs> um i guess the next thing um is it's kind of a it's kind of weird how we find ourselves and we've we've kind of researched how much of a niche piece of the game that this whole rolling role play um fed situation is based off of where we came from with cyber slam with wrestle and with with fedex we never knew it was such a, a, a niche market because we never were or a niche federation because we never knew or fully understood at that time, you know, 10, 10 20 years ago when we were doing it hot and heavy, um, that there were other things called e-feds that you, you just did, you know, angle based and, and posted twice and, and it was all wrote for you. I'm sure we knew where they were around, but we didn't, we didn't know they'd be as popular today as what, what we find out they are right you know yeah for sure 
So that's kind of kind of weird. Um, the the other thing is, um, I guess you know it's kind of kind of interesting to see once you get on Discord after after not talking to the, our community so long, you forget how much you, you're surprised how much you miss that that back and forth bullshit. Right. Um, every day. I mean, I, I tell you, once we started our Discord um server i've i've not been on, i i've been on every day since and and had conversations with people that have been very very interesting and and uh, entertaining nonetheless so sure. uh, that's really jumped out at me uh too um the other thing is uh, i'm surprised how many people don't want to make new characters they're sticking with their old characters yep um they're staying in their same lanes um, maybe because it's easier for them to write. Maybe it's maybe it's because they're they're stuck in that groove of being a tweener or or a, a heel, and they don't want to flip the script. I would I would encourage people to think about that. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's ten years later. Right. <laughs> Do something different. Get yeah. in a different lane. Um, and that leads me to the last one. I'm having a blast playing playing Maverick Dawson, and and I, and I don't have to be like you know, premier top guy or, or even, even, you know, mid-range guy, I'm having, I've been having fun with it. And I'm playing with, I'm playing and, and mixing it up with people that I haven't played in the past, played with in the past. So it's been right. interesting to be Tony Robe's second, second guy, whether it's good, whether it's bad, I'm having fun. Right. Hey, that's yeah. great. I, and I, I like that. I'm with you on a, a bunch of those. So my five are a little different. One or two of them probably line up closely. I'll say this. Number sure. five on my list. I can't be the only one that wasn't surprised by this. On the Team SBFF podcast, I was surprised when Miller logged in that it wasn't actually Jericho. Uh, my brain <laughs> is fully embedded that genocide is actually Jericho's online character. And I, you know, I'll admit it. I was disappointed. I thought maybe we were going to find out that Chris Jericho played Federation X and I was looking forward to it. Um, number four on my list of surprises, uh, God of How has been behind the scenes, guys, really supportive to Tim and I saying, can we help yeah. with this on your website redesign? Can I host it on my uh, server? Can we do this? I, I really was surprised to see uh, the willingness to engage the happiness to spread the word about our game. I really thought there'd be more defensiveness about letting people know about this other game that could potentially draw players away. I think it's there's something healthy about the way that the Fed world uh, shares players around in many cases and and advertises and and kind of pimps each other out. Yeah, and I think as long as you're not you're not poaching or headhunting, I think right. it's totally cool. You know, when we get yeah. to the line. So I, I like that. Um, I'll admit it. I'm surprised that the if you'd asked me going into it who our first uh, X Factor World Champion was going to be, I probably wouldn't have bet Carnage. Not not the match, right? The match I felt like could have gone either way. But if you'd said to me a month ago, "Hey, a month from now we're going to have a World Champion. Who's it going to be?" Yeah. Carnage might not have been my bet. Um, right. And so I'm a little surprised. But I'm also like it's it's fitting. Carnage was around in the old FedEx. You know, there's a continuity in that story. I love that he's selling the uh, the advertising executive who's on hard times, goes back to wrestling and ends up the world champion. How great is that? Yeah. Uh, so big fan. Um, like that, that was a surprise. Number two on my list. Um, Mikey Unlikely and the EFED podcast have been a boon for us. Um, yeah. Just getting to know him, getting to interview him, getting him on the podcast as a result, getting lots of other eyes on our, our brand and our logo, uh, being able to talk to him about being able to make caps so I can start wearing caps and you guys can have some fun with the fact that I've got them on backwards and what's logoed on them. Like all of that stuff goes back to Tim, you know, reaching out and pinging him. Um, what a great surprise that has been. What fun it's been to kind of get to know him a little bit and to, you know, just see the banter on his board and how he's not shy about jumping onto our board every now and then and engaging in all levels of the conversation. Um, yeah. I think that's been a, a really pleasant surprise. And uh, easily, far and away, the biggest surprise I've had um, since the relaunch 
bar none. It's it's five, four, three, two, one, that far in the front. Who knew that Chris could write an interesting character? Not me. I had no idea. And Tony Robes is super interesting. He's a good heel. He's writing him well. He twisted the story with Maverick from jealousy into manipulation, into actual partnership. Um, I don't want to build Chris up too much because I, I assume eventually I'm going to have to tear him down. He, it's so hard to contain him once that inflated ego starts to expand. But uh, I love the work that he's been doing. And again, if you'd told me who was coming back and to peg whose new character was going to blow up, it probably wouldn't have been Stoner. It wouldn't have been any of the boners. Let's be honest. I wouldn't have pegged that. One, I would have assumed that we were just going to get mo more bonering, which is entertaining, but not really uh, who I would have pegged it for. Uh, that Chris did this and made this run. Um, man, I, I, it's it's the most pleasant surprise, and yeah. I love it. I wasn't at all surprised by Maverick Dawson. I, I, I know what Lars is capable of doing, but the dynamic they've worked between them together, and then the introduction or the insertion of uh, Max Areza Entropy has been uh, all kinds of uh, fun to include. So, you know, just in general, I think that is a slam dunk number one for me on surprises since since the relaunch and, and uh, props to all of you for it. Um, Who would have anything? thought a, a month a month ago that, that we would have been sitting here talking about a card where we had 50 posts and, and 17 different players. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I and and I think that stuff kind of has a chance to make the list. I'll tell you what'll make me do redo this list. If we get into June or August or something, yeah. and we have enough legitimate, I want to participate writers that we can do a King of Wrestling, I yeah. will, man, I'll pump my fist and be down, down. And not the kind where we know the first round's all buys because people are picking people that will get crushed. Like that's, but but if, if we're in that scenario, I would be, I would be super excited by that. Uh, honorable mention goes to the anus eye because who knew I was going to be entertained by that? And I have been, uh, who would have, who would have guessed? They're pretty good riders. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're surprisingly good while equally disturbing and, and uncomfortable. And whoever it is, if you, if you going to have to make me answer your stupid admin questions one more time. And I know you're, I know you're a player that's been around. Right. I'm going to part of your you gimmick. The, I'm going to kick you in the nuts when I find out. Right. So, seems reasonable. Hey, before we go, it's been so long since we've had an ask excess uh, a session that I thought before we leave, I would ask excess. So, I've got two questions for you, Johnny Excess. Question 1. If a post lands on the boards and nobody reads it, does it have any heat? And question number 2. How's Twitter treating it? All right, everybody, that's it for Tim and I. We're done and we're out. We will be back next Saturday night with Genocide and we will see the Lars versus Genocide podcast. And one of the things that we'll be talking about is why people so desperately need for their characters to win. Should be an interesting conversation. We will talk to you all then. Have a fantastic week. See you, Tim. Take care. <laughs>